It's not easy being a child star. While you may be doing everything in your power to attract the opposite sex, it may surprise you to learn that some of your actions and behaviors can actually have the opposite effect. In fact, you may not even realize that you're acting in a way that drives men away when all you're really trying to do is draw them toward you. Besides working long hours on set and missing out on typical childhood experiences, many young actors and actresses have to worry about maintaining their careers after they've said goodbye to the iconic roles that made them a household name. And, unfortunately, not everyone succeeds. In order to take control of the situation and truly attract the right guys, we've dug up some research on what to avoid doing and what to do instead to avoid being labeled as unattractive to men. Wearing a ton of makeup could turn men off you may think that loading up on foundation, concealer, eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, lipstick, and blush, to name a few, makes you look your most attractive, but it may surprise you to learn that piling on the makeup is not appealing to guys. In fact, a study in the Quarterly Journal of Experimental Psychology revealed that women tend to overestimate the amount of makeup that men find attractive, and, as a result, many women end up applying way too much. In other words, you may choose to wear a lot of makeup because you think it draws men toward you, but, in reality, it's actually warding them off. With this in mind, it's time to face the fact, so to speak, that less is truly more when it comes to makeup's role in attraction, and it's in your best interest to opt for a natural look as opposed to caking it on for the guy you're sweet on. Too much makeup is apparently just unattractive to many guys. Extreme makeovers could make you look unattractive if a guy likes you for the right reasons, he's not going to want you to suddenly undergo an extreme makeover. He knew who you were when you met, and he won't want you to reinvent yourself in an attempt to win him over. Take Billy Joel's advice when he says, don't go changing, to try to please me. While some former child stars decided to leave the spotlight and pursue careers outside of the entertainment industry, others have sadly burned out after battling drug and alcohol abuse and making headlines for overall bad behavior. Others still have completely transformed their careers, becoming more famous than they ever once were. What they all have in common, however, is that their fans always want to see what they're up to and how they've changed over the years. Here is what a number of famous child stars look like today. I love you just the way you are. As matchmaker and dating coach Joanne Cohen explains, guys value confidence in a woman. Therefore, they likely will find it unattractive if you seem obsessed with your perceived imperfections. Talking about plastic surgery, cycling through different styles, and crash dieting in an attempt to lose weight can make you seem insecure, which is a real turn off. Fair warning, you might not recognize some of them anymore. Lindsay Lohan You probably first remember Lindsay Lohan in the dual role of Hallie Parker and Annie James in the 1998 remake of The Parent Trap. After that film's success, she really hit it big in the early 2000s. Be yourself. Trying to drastically change your appearance could make you appear unattractive to some men. Being a gossip is unattractive it might seem fun to share the latest rumors, scandals, and stories involving the lives of your friends, family, and co-workers with a guy, but it might surprise you to learn that being a gossip is a major turn-off. In 2003, she starred alongside Jamie Lee Curtis in Freaky Friday before starring in both Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen and the oft-quoted Mean Girls in 2004. While your intentions may be to try to open the lines of communication with him and keep him in the loop, it's important to recognize that giving him the lowdown on other people's sordid deeds actually makes you come across as having low self-esteem. In 2007, after a string of TV appearances and video shorts, she made her way back to film. That year she starred in Chapter 27, Georgia Rule, and I Know Who Killed Me. Unfortunately, that year was also the first time the former child star was arrested for driving under the influence. In fact, many people with a poor self-image rely on gossip as a way to make themselves feel better about their own lives, and they choose to talk about the latest failures and scandalous behaviors of others as a way to give themselves a boost. If you're looking to attract men, you should keep in mind that guys are drawn to women who are confident, who value themselves, and who don't put others down as a way to lift themselves up. So the next time you're dying to dish to him about all of your friend's dirty laundry, you should choose to clean up your act instead. Otherwise, it's just unattractive to most guys. Having no life can make guys think you're unattractive even if you're in a happy and mutually supportive relationship, sometimes you might need a little alone time. With mandatory court appearances and house arrest to contend with, Lohan's career stalled. 
this can be more true for some people than others, but, as a general rule, guys will want some space to breathe from time to time. Wanting time apart is not, necessarily, a reflection on how he feels about you. We all love feeling wanted but it can be exhausting when your partner is excessively needy. A guy will likely find it unattractive if you demand that he's by your side 24-7 and can't find any way to occupy yourself when he's not around. As relationship expert Sean Horan PhD explains, I like to think of it this way, I love eating cake, but I can't eat it 24-7. She spent the next few years partying until she decided she, needed to grow up, and move to London. As humans, there's a tug between being autonomous and bonding with others. What's the compromise? Plan regular outings with friends, take a fitness class, or binge watch that show that you love, and he hates, while he does his own thing. Then, chill together and share your experiences. Being excessively confident can be unattractive to some while having high self-esteem is a quality that men find highly attractive in women, it's important to understand that there's a fine line between being confident and being conceited. She said it was the best thing she's ever done. After moving to Dubai and acting in the British comedy Sick Note, she opened several beach clubs, strangely starred in a commercial for Lawyer.com, and announced a new MTV reality show. Clearly, she's been keeping busy. And while you should definitely believe in yourself, be proud of your accomplishments, and be happy about what you have to offer, you should also keep in mind that showing off is a major turn-off. Specifically, research has shown that people who boast about themselves don't even recognize the full extent of the negative response they receive from others. Although you may assume that your self-proclaimed awesomeness is attracting men, having a huge ego and acting like a narcissist are actually huge mistakes. Unfortunately, in September 2018, she made headlines for posting a disturbing Instagram live video, in which she followed a refugee family around, urging them to allow their two sons to stay at her hotel, and subsequently got knocked down by a concerned mother. Needless to say, people have been worried about Lohan's mental health. Amanda Bynes' Lindsay Lohan is far from the only young female actress to struggle after experiencing life as a child star, and no one knows that better than Amanda Bynes. Alternatively, you should opt for humility and be secure enough in yourself that you don't have to rely on arrogance to get a gent, as the right man won't need you to constantly reinforce just how amazing you truly are, he'll see it on his own. Having no purpose or ambition seems unattractive you don't have to have your whole life figured out, but guys don't want to be with someone who is lacking any sort of purpose or direction. In 1996, Bynes made her debut on the Nickelodeon show All That, where her Ask Ashley sketch showed off her ability to play a range of emotions. In 1999, she starred in The Amanda Show before branching out into movies with Big Fat Liar in 2002, What a Girl Wants in 2003, She's the Man in 2006, and Hairspray in 2007. And she did all that while starring on the TV series What I Like About You. But just when her career was at its peak, Bynes hit rock bottom. In 2010, she retired, and then unretired, from acting. It's unattractive to listen to someone explain how lost they are if they don't have a plan to get on track. Plus, if it seems like you don't know what you want to do with your life, it can make you come across as unstable. While a man might enjoy feeling needed from time to time, he doesn't want to feel like he's got to rescue you if you are constantly quitting jobs and changing majors in school, or if you have no drive. This might be especially true if he's got a clear vision for his future. Between March and September of 2012, she was arrested for two hit and runs, driving under the influence, and driving with a suspended license. It will be hard to picture you by his side if you don't know what you're doing with your life. Bad mouthing your ex is not a good look you may think that bad mouthing your ex around a new guy is a good decision, but this kind of negative behavior actually makes you look bad instead. From there, her behavior became even more bizarre and erratic, with media outlets claiming that her actions were the result of mental illness and that she was having a complete breakdown. In 2014, she revealed via Twitter that she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. While your intentions may be to show a guy how much you're over your last bow and that he has nothing to worry about when it comes to living up to the men you've been with previously, constantly criticizing your ex isn't attractive. After all, not only does your need to put down your ex make you come across as spiteful and juvenile, but your unrelenting fixation on your ex makes it seem as though you're still harboring feelings for him. Furthermore, bad-mouthing your ex also shows any potential love interest that he could be next when it comes to being the subject of your hateful words. 
so rather than talking smack about your ex and venting about all the ways he wronged you, leave the past in the past so you can attract Mr. Right in the future. Being a negative Nelly is seriously unattractive throughout each day, we all go through a range of emotions. Since then, she seems to be doing better and, in a June 2017 interview, Bynes, who studied fashion while away from the spotlight, said she is sober and ready to return to acting. In 2020, she shared that she'd gotten engaged, though there are some strange things about Amanda Bynes' relationship. Macaulay Culkin no, he isn't dead. And that's perfectly normal, it's just part of being human. After starring in Home Alone in 1990, Macaulay Culkin became arguably the most famous child star ever. Still, while we have to be authentic in how we react to situations, of course, we should also make a concerted effort to maintain a positive outlook. Starring in everything from Home Alone 2, Lost in New York and My Girl to playing the ultra-wealthy kid in Richie Rich and the partially animated bookworm in The Pagemaster, Culkin was everywhere. Not only is it healthy for our own mental sanity, but it can also have an affect on our relationship. One study showed that men found women less physically attractive if their personality seemed negative. He even played a violent and pretty much legit evil kid in The Good Son. Oh, and he was in Michael Jackson's music video for, Black or White, after which the two became close friends and Culkin became the godfather to Jackson's kids. Then he kind of just disappeared, resurfacing briefly in the early 2000s with a role in Saved. From 2005 to 2010, he primarily voiced characters on Robot Chicken, and, beginning in 2013, he put his focus on his band The Pizza Underground. You may have also heard the drug rumors, seen that weird photo inception incident with Ryan Gosling, or watched the video short he did in 2015, where he played grown-up Kevin McAllister suffering from the trauma of being left home alone. Culkin later signed on to star in Seth Green's Changeland. Mara Wilson Mara Wilson is known for playing the adorable and precocious little girl in tons of 90s movies. That's right, a woman's attitude can be a real turn-off even if she, otherwise, looks good. That's a big deal. So, instead of worrying about clothes and makeup, make it a bigger priority to commit to being less pessimistic and more optimistic if you want to be most attractive. No one like to see women being catty to other girls it's important that you speak your mind and that you stand up for yourself if you are ever in a situation that makes you feel marginalized. That being said, it can be really unattractive if you seem addicted to drama and go out of your way to be mean to others. You might think you're showing off by engaging in a catfight, but you run the risk of looking petty and immature. There's a big difference between acting like a juvenile girl and an emotionally secure woman in charge of a situation, and your man will definitely take notice. From her role as the youngest daughter in 1993's Mrs. If you want to impress him by beating out the competition, train for a marathon, get that promotion at work, or commit to being your best self. Doubtfire, the wise beyond her years skeptic in 1994's Miracle on 34th Street and the title character with telekinetic powers in 1996's Matilda, Wilson seemed poised to be the next big thing. Then the child star quit acting, basically retiring after her role in Thomas and the Magic Railroad in 2000. Instead of acting, she's been pursuing her passion for writing. Put your best assets on display without needing to put anyone down. Men don't always like a high-pitched voice for whatever reason, so many women seem to think that a shrill, high-pitched voice is somehow attractive to men. Not only did she have a website dedicated to her literary endeavors, but she released a book called Where Am I Now, in September 2016. Maybe it's how female characters are portrayed on television. Maybe they think it's how we think Barbie would sound in real life, but, in reality, researchers have discovered that men don't really like it. According to the study, Guys found, a female voice sounded attractive when it was breathy, and, moderately high-pitched. You don't have to go as deep as Scarlett Johansson's voice, but her voice might be more attractive to most men than, say, Kim Kardashian's voice. Of course, don't try to change yourself to make anyone happy. If your voice squeaks naturally, you should love it and embrace it. The right guy will love it and anything else that comes out of your mouth. There's such a thing as being too needy when it comes to attracting men, it's important to recognize that men want to feel as though they're needed. Wilson does, however, still have a passion for voice acting, and, in 2016, she voiced Jill Pill on the TV series Bojack Horseman and Liv Amara in Big Hero 6, the series. 
She has also been vocal about her struggles with anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, and depression, and she is very active on Twitter, if you want to find out what she's up to next. Drew Barrymore Drew Barrymore's successful career has spanned so many decades, it's easy to forget she started as a child star. In 1982, she stole hearts as the adorable little sister in E.T. the Extraterrestrial before then playing Charlie, the little girl with pyrokinesis, in 1984's Firestarter. She then followed these films up with the 1985 horror film Cat's Eye. Still, Barrymore dealt with her share of child star troubles, including drugs and alcohol, but she kept working while in and out of treatment. With more than 20 credited roles between 1985 and 1995, it was her role in 1996's Scream that served as her second breakout gig. From rom-coms like Never Been Kissed and The Wedding Singer to Donnie Darko and Charlie's Angels, Barrymore stayed busy. Now clean and sober, Barrymore has said that her battle with addiction has made her a better mom. Specifically, men want to know that they add value to your life and that they're not superfluous, expendable, or disposable. In 2017, she starred in the horror comedy series The Santa Clarita Diet, for which she also served as an executive producer. Haley Joel Osment You probably recognize Haley Joel Osment as the little boy who sees dead people in M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense, but, prior to that 1999 breakout role, he had made guest appearances on many TV shows, including Walker, Texas Ranger and Murphy Brown, as well as several TV movies. While The Sixth Sense netted him many awards and nominations, as did his 2001 role in AI, Artificial Intelligence, Osment spent the next several years after his 2003 role in Secondhand Lions primarily doing voice acting for TV shows and video games, including Kingdom Hearts. Along the way, the former child star also made his Broadway debut and graduated from the NYU Tisch School of the Arts in 2011. However, many women mistakenly interpret a man's desire to feel needed by becoming overly needy, jealous, and desperate to spend every waking moment with him, all of which are anything but appealing behaviors to guys. So, if you're someone who tends to become clingy and emotionally dependent on a man because you think it'll bring him closer and inspire him to stick around, know that you're actually just pushing him away. Moreover, men want to know that they complement your life as opposed to being the center of your universe on which your entire happiness level and sense of self-worth depend. Fortunately, there are steps you can take right now to break your cycle of neediness when it comes to men, such as putting an end to negative self-talk, getting out of your comfort zone, and learning how to resolve issues on your own. Taking unnecessary risks can seem unattractive while it's true that some studies suggest that guys like a girl who is spontaneous, is interested in playing sports, and values a more adventurous existence, there is a limit to what sort of, wild, traits are considered attractive and desirable in a partner. Researchers found that people who engaged in, modern risks, such as smoking, binge drinking, Driving without a seatbelt, mountain climbing, and skateboarding, were less attractive than those who did not participate in these types of activities. Interestingly, respondents explained that these types of risks were, rated as unattractive because they are culturally viewed as negative, e.g. he has since made his return to acting with parts in the short-lived series Alpha House, the movie Entourage, Silicon Valley, and Future Man, among other gigs. Anna Klumsky after playing Vada in My Girl and My Girl 2. You probably saw child star Anna Klumsky in a lot of places, but you may not remember them. While her role as Vada was by far her most memorable part of her youth, Klumsky later appeared in many TV movies and series between 1994 and 2012, including Early Edition, 30 Rock, Law & Order, Twice, each time as a different character, Covert Affairs, and White Collar. She also acted in productions on and off Broadway through 2015. But it was landing the role of Amy Bruckheimer in Veep alongside Julia Louis-Dreyfus starting in 2012 that gave Klumsky her second big break. Klumsky's performance garnered her six Primetime Emmy nominations for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. Uncool, or, stupid. Remember that next time you choose not to buckle up. People consider playing hard to get to be unattractive while it's true that men are drawn to women who are outgoing and assertive individuals, it's important to recognize that there's a fine line between being independent and being unavailable. In fact, it is a scene in which Klumsky's character goes off on Louis Dreyfus' character that many call the greatest veep scene ever. Tia and Tamara Mowry Tia and Tamara Mowry are twin sisters who took the 90s by storm with their hit sitcom Sister, Sister. 
The series premiered in 1994, and, despite a network change, it continued until 1999. You may think that playing hard to get and acting in a distant and disengaged way can help you attract a guy, but you're making a mistake by not making time for him. In fact, playing games can make you seem highly immature and can give off the impression that you're not yet ready, willing, and or interested in getting to know him on a deeper and more meaningful level. During that time, the sisters also made appearances on episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? and Smart Guy. And while you may assume that acting detached and aloof increases your allure, you're actually coming across as uninterested, flaky, and just plain annoying. After Sister, Sister ended, the twins starred in Seventeen again, The Hot Chick, Twitches, and Twitches too, but, from that point forward, their careers took different paths. Tia starred as Melanie Barnett on the TV series The Game from 2006 to 2015, then, from 2015 to 2016, she lent her voice to Fresh Beat Band of Spies and had an arc on the TV series Mistresses. Playing hard to get is an easy way to strike out with a guy and appear unattractive. Being a damsel in distress isn't too attractive many childhood fairy tales would have you believe that men are attracted to overly dramatic women who are in need of rescuing, but it's time to turn the page on this outdated way of thinking. In 2019, she starred in the Netflix show Family Reunion. She also wrote a cookbook to accompany her show Tia Mowry at Home on the Cooking Channel. Tamara, on the other hand, played shorter-lived roles on TV series Roommates, Things We Do for Love, and Melissa and Joey. In reality, men aren't interested in drama, and, if you take the woe is me approach in the hopes of attracting a guy, you may be sad to see that seeking his attention by playing the victim will only make you appear desperate, immature, and overdramatic. The former child star also appeared on the reality series Daytime Divas and served as a co-host on the syndicated talk show The Real. Christina Ricci whether you know her best as Wednesday Adams in The Adams Family, Cat in Casper, or young Roberta in Now and Then, it's safe to say the 90s were kind to child star Christina Ricci. And her career certainly didn't stop there. Rather than trying to catch his eye by catastrophizing certain situations and hoping it'll entice him to come and save you, you should save yourself the trouble by engaging in exercises that can help to boost your self-esteem, as well as learning effective problem-solving strategies that can help you to become more self-sufficient. If you want to attract your very own Prince Charming, acting like a drama queen is the wrong approach. Don't wear too much perfume if you want to seem attractive a lot of marketing goes into making women feel like they need to buy a certain perfume in order to be sexy and desirable. Now that celebrities have entered the industry, the push has become even stronger, but does dabbing from a bottle really give us a boost? Not according to science. Richie is one of the few stars who has consistently worked ever since her big break, with multiple acting credits nearly every single year since 1993. From her roles in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, 200 Cigarettes, Sleepy Hollow, Prozac Nation, and Black Snake Moan, to her TV appearances on shows such as Ally McBeal, Grey's Anatomy, and The Good Wife, among others, Richie has been busy. She was also one of the stars of the short-lived Pan Am, before playing the title character Lizzie Borden in the 2015 miniseries The Lizzie Borden Chronicles. In 2015, she starred as Zelda Sayer Fitzgerald on Z, The Beginning of Everything, which she also executive produced, and, in 2018, she appeared in the movie Distorted. Researchers have determined that a woman's natural scent can be a powerful aphrodisiac on its own, but there's a catch, she's most desirable when she's ovulating. During the study, men were given t-shirts worn by women who were ovulating and those who were not. The results showed that men who sniffed t-shirts from ovulating women had higher testosterone levels than the men who sniffed t-shirts that didn't indicate fertility, either worn by non-ovulating women or unworn. So, instead of masking your body's natural come-hither sense, let nature do all the talking. Having overly styled hair isn't always a good thing while you may spend a lot of time and money trying to perfect the intricate updos and complicated styles that you see in magazines and on television, it turns out men aren't attracted to overly done and processed hair. While she hasn't stopped acting, Richie has said that since she got married and had a baby, her most important role now is a mom, and she's a completely different person than she was before she had her son. Jaleel White You probably best know Jaleel White as Steve Urkel, the annoying, cheese-loving, nerd next door on Family Matters, but after nine years on the show, from 1989 to 1998, White mostly made guest appearances on single episodes of TV series with occasional longer arcs here and there, like his eight-episode run on Fake It Till You Make It. 
The former child star also appeared on several reality competitions, including Celebrity Family Feud, Dancing with the Stars, and Worst Cooks in America, Celebrity Edition. In addition to having a role in the Me, Myself, and I television series, White has done voice work on the animated Guardians of Luna, acted in the drama The Choir Director and the comedy Fifth of July, and hosted the game show Total Blackout. In fact, a survey by Pantene revealed that 78% of men are drawn to women with shiny, full, healthy-looking hair, as opposed to hair that's been overly styled and manipulated. Specifically, loose curls and wavy hair are considered more appealing to men than excessively flat iron slick straight hair and complex updos. He also appeared in The Big Show Show and Raven's Home. White clearly aims to show audiences everywhere that he's so much more than Urkel. Edward Furlong If you didn't grow up in the 90s, chances are you may not know who Edward Furlong even is. But if you're still not convinced that you should opt for a more natural and effortless look when it comes to your locks, keep in mind that the survey found that 80% of men believe that having unhealthy hair is a total turn-off. And what's even more telling? Approximately 75% of men reported that a woman's hair is the first thing that they notice about the woman herself. The child star's big breakout was in 1991's Terminator 2, Judgment Day where he played John Connor, the son of Linda Hamilton's character Sarah Connor. In a word, opting for low-maintenance hair will yield high results when it comes to attracting members of the opposite sex. Predictable hobbies can be boring do you love to cook, read books, and take long walks on the beach? That's great and you absolutely have to make yourself happy, but if you are wondering about what guys find attractive, you might want to think a little more outside the box while still being true to yourself, of course. According to a study published by the Journal of Creative Behavior, researchers at the University of Pennsylvania polled 815 male undergraduates to determine which forms of creative outlet were the most sexually appealing. Together with Arnold Schwarzenegger, they worked to save themselves and the world from an evil cyborg. And it made Edward Furlong a certified 90s heartthrob. Things that were considered hot included playing sports, taking spontaneous road trips, performing in a band, and taking artistic photographs. Essentially though, the underlying message here is that seeing people follow their passions and instincts is sexy, so trust your gut and let your heart lead the way. Being a party girl can be unattractive you may think that being the kind of gal who's down for whatever, goes out non-stop, and is always looking for a good time is the way to attract a man, but being an out-of-control party animal can come back to bite you. In fact, most men try to stay away from party girls because these women have a tendency to act recklessly, make poor decisions possibly under the influence, and put themselves and others in uncomfortable and potentially harmful situations. He was in all the girls' magazines at the time, you know, Teen Beat, Bop, and the like. Furlong followed T2 with mostly smaller movie roles and appeared in Aerosmith's music video for Livin' on the Edge. Then, in 1998, he starred as Danny Vineyard in American History X alongside Edward Norton and, in 1999, as Hawk in Detroit Rock City. Poised to make a comeback, he found himself hospitalized in 2001 of a suspected overdose. Men are certainly interested in women who are confident, outgoing, and who like to have fun, but guys will draw the line when it comes to women who throw caution to the wind and are always looking to party hard no matter the circumstances. Rather than coming off as careless, immature, and unattractive, you should opt to party responsibly and enjoy the positive responses you'll see from the guys around you. No one wants you to starve yourself when going out on a first date. Many women put a lot of thought into what they pick from the menu. Inside, she might be craving a big, juicy burger, but, instead of ordering what she'd like to eat, she opts for a salad during a date. Maybe she wants to look like she takes good care of herself or she is genuinely is trying to lose weight. Maybe she's budget conscious and doesn't want to pick the big ticket item. It's one thing if this is how you regularly eat and you are satisfied with your meal. Drug abuse, arrests, and restraining orders defined the next several years while he occasionally took on smaller acting projects. It's another if you start picking fries from his plate or if you refuse to eat anything at all. A pivotal role in 2011's The Green Hornet could have been a turning point, but he once again found himself in jail. He's still acting, however. Here's hoping he can get out of his own way. Soleil Moon Fry While her breakout role was playing the title role in the TV show Punky Brewster, Soleil Moon Fry may be most recognizable today from her role as Roxy King in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Firstly, it doesn't seem like you're being authentic. Secondly, guys don't want you to order something you don't even want, only to end up eating half their meal. 
Plus, who wants to chow down alone? This is especially true since studies show that men tend to eat a little more when women are around. Always agreeing with him isn't attractive believe it or not, always agreeing with a man can be a major turn off. If you're afraid to state your own opinions, are unwilling to disagree with him, and or want to avoid any conflict because you believe it'll drive him away, it's actually your lack of openness, honesty, and authenticity that'll do just that. In between, the former child star was in several TV movies and series, but, after Sabrina, she primarily focused on voice acting, working on The Proud Family, Bratz, and Robot Chicken. These days her focus is a bit different. She hosted Home Made Simple on OWN from 2013 to 2014. She has also grown her family, having had four babies, and very publicly used Nutrisystem to lose weight following her pregnancies. After all, being able to express your true thoughts and feelings is what helps to strengthen your connection and enables you to get to know each other on a deeper, more intimate level. The key is to be your true self, that way you can attract the right man who appreciates the person you really are and not the person you think he wants you to be. Remember, a guy isn't looking for a clone, so you should stop playing a part if you want to be part of his life. Being, high maintenance, could make you appear unattractive to guys in When Harry Met Sally, Harry tells Sally she is, the worst kind, of high maintenance. You're high maintenance but you think you're low maintenance, he explains. When Sally says she doesn't see it, Harry recalls the particular way she orders at restaurants, telling her that getting items, on the side is a very big thing, for her. What Harry labels high maintenance, Sally, rightfully, says she just wants things the way she wants them. And what Harry means by a, high maintenance, woman matches up with Urban Dictionary's definition. A person who, has higher than normal expectations, has a greater requirement for affection or attention, has more needs and or demands and therefore more difficult or challenging. Elite Daily writer Robert Anthony wrote that a woman is high maintenance when she, is expensive, and he advised readers to avoid those women, as HuffPost highlighted, the catch-all term high maintenance has been, vilified by society. Is it really any wonder that men have become convinced that, high maintenance, equals unattractiveness? But that doesn't mean you should change. Armelle Philpotts, a member of the British Association for Counseling and Psychotherapy, told the publication that some men use the label to shift responsibilities and label you as the problem. Spoiler. You're not the problem. A less than ideal face could apparently mark you as unattractive to men when it comes to overall attractiveness. Marcus Rontala, an evolutionary biologist at Turku University in Finland, told Science Nordic that, facial attractiveness is one of the most important factors, more important than. In a 2017 interview with ET, she said she felt like her best self and wants to raise daughters who feel like their best selves. Body shape. But just what makes for an attractive face? A study conducted by Rontala and his team found that it actually has a lot to do with fat percentage. She also signed on for a punky Brewster reboot, because what isn't being rebooted these days? Hallie Eisenberg remember the days before DVRs and on-demand television when you actually had to watch commercials. If so, you probably remember Hallie Eisenberg as the Pepsi girl from the 90s. The younger sister of actor Jesse Eisenberg, Hallie used her Pepsi success to nab roles in Bicentennial Man and How to Eat Fried Worms. The men who participated in the study perceived female faces with a certain amount of facial fat to be attractive. But after a small role in 2010's Holy Rollers, alongside her older brother, the child star seemingly retired from acting. Faces that had either too little or too much fat were considered unattractive. It may sound strange that men prefer a middle-of-the-road weighted face, but researchers think this could be related to how men perceive health. If her Instagram account is any indication, she's leading a pretty normal life these days and is relishing being an aunt to Jess's son. Jonathan Lipnicki the too cute for words little boy from Jerry Maguire is all grown up. Women with faces that are either too thin or too thick may be perceived as unhealthy or even not as fertile. From a biological standpoint, men seem to be attracted to features that point to a woman's good health and ability to bear children. Even though the adorable little Jonathan Lipnicki also had roles on Dawson's Creek and the Jeff Foxworthy show, much of his immediate work after Jerry Maguire was of the voice work variety. However, he also appeared in Stuart Little and Stuart Little 2, though fans remember him more from his role in The Little Vampire. The early 2000s brought Lipnicki, who suffered from depression and the effects of bullying, mostly small roles and bit parts on TV series. 
but in 2012, Lipnicki had a six-episode arc on the series Mother Lover followed by eight episodes in 2016 on interns of FIELD. He later scored several gigs in 2017, including the horror movies Beware the Lake and Circus Kane. I guess nothing really scares you anymore once you've survived being a child star. Corey Feldman as one half of, the two Coreys, of the 80s and 90s, Corey Feldman, alongside the other Corey, Hyam, was a huge star. While Feldman appeared in several TV series in the late 70s and early 80s, his role of Tommy in Friday the 13th, the final chapter and Friday the 13th, a new beginning, followed by his role as, Mouth, in The Goonies, set him up for superstardom. He went on to appear in more than 30 movies and TV shows in the 80s and 90s, including seven during those years with Hyam. The more you know, right? Men and women often find facial piercings unattractive as evolutionary biologist Marcus Rontalas explained to Science Nordic, facial attractiveness has a significant impact on overall attractiveness. But by the 2000s, Feldman was relegated to mostly small parts until starring alongside Hyam in the reality show The Two Corys, which was cancelled before the end of the second season. So could a nose ring or a lip piercing play a role in impacting your attractiveness? As it turns out, yes. Once again back to bit parts, Feldman returned into the spotlight after Haim's death when he spoke out about alleged sexual abuse he and Hyam suffered at Hollywood parties. He later opened up about an alleged pedophile ring in Hollywood, which, he claimed, put his life in danger. In 2016, the former child star appeared on the Today Show to promote an album, a performance that was dubbed, Bizarre. Just a few weeks later, Feldman and his band returned to the show to defend the performance saying they were, not letting the bullies get to us. In 2017, the band set out on a summer tour, proving that they really weren't about to let anyone hold them back. Kel Mitchell who loves orange soda? Kel loves orange soda. But where in the world did Kel Mitchell go after his widely successful early career on all that, Keenan and Kel, and Goodberger? While his comedic partner Keenan Thompson found success on Saturday Night Live, Mitchell's success was harder earned. And the impact isn't exactly positive. One study found that both women and men with piercings were rated as less physically attractive than those who did not have any piercings. Faces with multiple piercings were rated as even less attractive. While men are not fans of facial piercings on women, women actually dislike them on men even more. The former child star lent his voice to T-Bone on Clifford the Big Red Dog from 2000 to 2003, then spent the rest of the early 2000s making mostly small guest appearances on TV series and movies. During his hardest times, Mitchell turned to drugs and alcohol and battled suicidal thoughts. The study revealed that, men with piercings were rated more negatively than women with piercings. Despite neither men nor women being all that into facial piercings, the study revealed that participants who considered themselves open to experience and sensation-seeking were at least more favorable toward facial piercings. But Mitchell made it through, crediting his survival to a return to his faith, he's the grandson of a preacher, as well as his relationships with his wife and kids. His return to faith also coincided with a return to work. Since 2015, he has starred as Double G on the Nickelodeon show Game Shakers. In 2019, he appeared in the All That Revival. Tina Mahorino Even if you don't know her name, you definitely know her face. If you're rocking some facial studs, you may have an easier time wooing an adventure seeker, it seems. Being smart may seem unattractive because of ingrained gender roles, men like smart women, or do they? Three studies conducted by Laura Park, a professor at the University of Buffalo, and psychology professors Ariana Young and Paul Eastwick at California Lutheran University and the University of Texas, respectively, revealed a shocking truth. Depending on where you first saw her, Tina Mahorino may be best known as the young Enola, alongside Kevin Costner, in Waterworld, the adorable Tony, alongside the titular Seal, in Andre, or as little Molly, alongside Whoopi Goldberg and Ray Liotta, in Karina, Karina. According to their research, men appeared to be attracted to smart women from a distance. However, upon becoming both emotionally and physically closer to the women, men actually found them less attractive. In an interview with The Washington Post, Jenna Birch, author of The Love Gap, A Radical Plan to Win in Life and Love, explained this phenomenon known as psychological distance. She said, there are a lot of pros to smart, independent career women. They have that second paycheck, they're intellectually in the same plane and they are similarly educated. These are all good things, of course, and Birch said they make for great partners. 
Regardless, the early 90s were good to this child star. But it wasn't until her 2004 role as the glamour shot-taking, handicraft-wielding Deb in Napoleon Dynamite that fans were left asking, where have I seen her before, and then, whatever happened to the girl that played Deb? True fans will know that between her child actor blockbusters and her appearance as Deb, Mahorino was in an assortment of TV movies and, after her dynamite fame, she played Cindy Mac McKenzie on Veronica Mars from 2004 to 2007. But when it came time to close that distance and men had to interact with these women face to face, she revealed, they started to lose interest. Birch added that a lot of this is subconscious and stems from ingrained gender roles. Being stressed out can make others think you're unattractive. We all know that being stressed out isn't good for us, but apparently it also makes us unattractive. Sigh. Along the way she continued to make multi-episode appearances on other TV shows like The Deep End, Big Love, Bones, and True Blood. But it was perhaps her run on Grey's Anatomy as Dr. Even though you may think guys would have a hard time deciphering when you're feeling stressed, one comprehensive study proved otherwise. According to the research, the higher a woman's stress hormones, the lower attractiveness rating male participants gave her. On the surface, it may not appear to make much sense. However, the study's lead author, evolutionary biologist Marcus Rontala told Science Nordic, this is actually quite logical, because we know that stress hormones inhibit the female sex hormone, and if the stress level is very high, it can make the woman infertile. As was the case with facial weight, it appears men consider a woman attractive based on her perceived fertility and health. Heather Brooks that thrust her back into the spotlight. What's a girl to do? Our study shows that if a woman wishes to look attractive, Rontala told the publication, she should try to keep her stress levels down. HMPH. She later reprised her role as Mac on the Veronica Mars movie and appeared in the short-lived TNT series Legends and the CBS show Scorpion. Tom Felton While it's possible you remember former child star Tom Felton as Little P. Green from 1997's The Borrowers, chances are you know him best as the cunning and despicable Slytherin student Draco Malfoy from the Harry Potter film franchise. Oh Draco, how we love to hate you. The role earned Felton two MTV Movie Awards for Best Villain and, weirdly, inspired fans to love the villain. Notably, even Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has said how unnerving it is that teenage girls fall for the villainous Malfoy. Still, if you kept up with Felton's later works, it's easy to ask whether these ladies were falling for Malfoy or perhaps for Felton himself. While he continued to play a villain whose death we couldn't wait for in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, he later played Julian Albert on the CW's The Flash, a role that finally sees him, spoiler alert, overcoming his villainous turn as the Barry Allen-hating, supervillain-possessed jerk and becoming the lovable scientist who falls in love with Caitlin Snow. Ariana Grande long before Ariana Grande was teaching us that God is a woman and to say, thank you, next, to our exes, before she got engaged to that that dude from Saturday Night Live, and before she and that actor broke up, the ponytailed songstress was a full-fledged Nickelodeon star. Grande appeared as flighty cat Valentine first in Victorious and then in the crossover hit Sam and Cat, opposite iCarly star Jeanette McCurdy. But Grande, though thankful for the role, wasn't exactly thrilled at continuing on playing the ditzy character. The now former child star told People, For a long time I was attached to a character that was nothing like myself. It was a little frustrating. Thankfully, just a few years later, she would relaunch her career as a sassy mini Mariah in training with a slew of hits to her name. Unfortunately, the devastating 2017 terrorist attack at her show in Manchester, England threw her for a loop. But Grande showed wisdom far beyond her years in the aftermath, using her experiences to create her album Sweetener. When you're handed a challenge, instead of sitting there and complaining about it, why not try to make something beautiful, she explained to Time. Daniel Radcliffe the boy who lived would have rather been known as anything else in the world following the phenomenon that made him a household name. Harry Potter star Daniel Radcliffe ensured his subsequent career path was as winding and weird as possible by starring in sweet rom-coms like What If and Funky Oddities Like Horns. Perhaps the weirdest role on the young Brit's resume, however, is one of a flatulent corpse, who is ridden like a jet ski by co-star Paul Dano in The Inimitable Swiss Army Man. Radcliffe also starred on the TV show Miracle Workers. Speaking to GQ, Radcliffe admitted that most people expect him to have a bit of an attitude due to his child star fame. People say to me, I was so expecting you to be AD asterisk asterisk K, he said, joking, in a way it's great, because pretty much everyone I've met in the last 10 years has expected me to be a complete T asterisk asterisk T. So it's easy to exceed that.
Kenan Thompson for readers of a certain age, there was no show more important to their adolescence than Kenan and Kel. And while Kel Mitchell continued to appear on Nickelodeon in his adult life with the hit show Game Shakers, his buddy Kenan Thompson took an entirely different route. He first started his career on Nick's ensemble show All That at just 15 years old, before graduating to his own show, Kenan and Kel, at age 18. He stayed until 2000, and in 2003, he joined SNL. The former child star admitted to feeling like an outsider at first, but he soon became one of the sketch comedy's MVPs. In fact, he's the longest-running cast member at the time of this writing, as noted by Vanity Fair in a 2018 profile of the beloved comedian. As for his rumored estranged friendship from Mitchell, in a 2018 radio interview with Power 105, One's The Breakfast Club, Thompson set the record straight, making it clear that the two never had any real beef. Josh Peck Although Keenan and Kel made for the dynamic Nick duo for one generation of kids, a whole other group of youngsters felt the same way about Drake and Josh. Starring child stars Drake Bell and Josh Peck as a couple of mismatched stepbrothers, the show shared a similarly wacky sense of humor with Kenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell's iconic series. Although most people would be embarrassed about their awkward teen years being preserved forever, Peck has taken it in stride, frequently referencing his earlier career on his Twitter account and telling MTV News in an interview that the only thing he regrets is his hair. There have definitely been seasons of Drake and Josh that I would buy back my hairstyle if I could, he admitted. Peck and Bell reunited on Peck's short-lived sitcom Grandfathered, much to fans' delight. Though they had a difficult time when Bell later wasn't invited to Peck's wedding, they subsequently made up, with Bell even hinting to Entertainment Tonight that a Drake and Josh reunion could still be in the cards. Miranda Cosgrove The world first fell in love with Miranda Cosgrove as the plucky summer in School of Rock. The child star later starred on a couple of heavy-hitter Nickelodeon shows, first as the meddling little sister on Drake and Josh and then as the titular internet celebrity on iCarly. Cosgrove also managed to juggle lending her voice to movies like the Despicable Me franchise and having a successful music career. However, when asked by Seventeen about her favorite thing to do, Cosgrove shared that it was acting in iCarly. It's so much fun and I love getting the script every week and not really knowing what insane thing I'm going to be doing. It's just like an adventure every episode, she explained. In 2017, with the show wrapped, Cosgrove admitted to Collider that she and co-star Jeanette McCurdy had watched old episodes of iCarly to bask in how dorky they both were. The only thing Cosgrove would change, if she could, would be some of the ridiculous outfits she wore on the show. Zendaya nowadays, the artist known simply as Zendaya is all grown up. But young Ms. Coleman actually started her career as a dancer opposite Bella Thorne in Shake It Up, the hit Disney show she was cast on at age 13, via Glamour. Zendaya later became one of the youngest Disney producers ever when she parlayed her position into producing and starring in KC Undercover, a popular show about a family of secret agents. The former child star's career later included head-turning roles in films like The Greatest Showman and Spider-Man, Homecoming, as well as the HBO show Euphoria. However, Zendaya may perhaps best be known as an activist. The singer and actress memorably called out a magazine for photoshopping an image to make her appear skinnier. As my social platforms grew, I realized that my voice was so much more important than I had originally thought. I think if every young person understood the power of their voice, things would be a lot different, she told Glamour. Ross Lynch Harry Potter himself may have starred in a movie about a farting corpse, but one would be hard-pressed to find a child star transformation more shocking than Ross Lynch's. The actor went from Disney sweetheart in the hit show Austin and Ally to notorious serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer in My Friend Dahmer. In an interview with GQ, he admitted that he hadn't sought out the material. However, while working with Disney, he always wanted to do something, independent, and, maybe a little darker. Lynch's performance gained widespread critical acclaim, but that doesn't mean his Disney character Austin Moon is completely behind him. When questioned by GQ about whether he'd ever revisit his most famous TV role, the Teen Beach movie actor, who later starred as Harvey Kinkle in Netflix's Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, suggested that he maybe would in the future. While on set, we did always joke that we'd love to have an HBO revival where we're like 30 years old, and do a season that's completely R-rated. I think there's a market for that, honestly. And I honestly would totally be down for that, he enthused. Elijah Wood nowadays, Elijah Wood is in complete control of his own destiny, 
producing oddities like the Greasy Strangler and Mandy via his company Spectre Vision. But back in 1993, when a 12-year-old Wood was just starting his career, his mother was still in charge. Wood was banned from doing horror movies and anything that didn't give a good impression as a child star. It's important to be a good example when you're in the movie industry, she told the Los Angeles Times firmly. Thankfully, decades years later, Wood, who starred in projects as different as The Lord of the Rings and Wilfred, is able to watch and star in as many horror movies as he pleases. His lengthy and varied career has included playing a first-person killer in the esteemed 2012 remake of slasher classic Maniac. He enthusiastically told Nylon that Spectre Vision is always looking for films that have a unique voice and are pushing things forward or doing something different with horror and genre cinema. Wood is interested primarily in the art of filmmaking itself. He simply chooses projects that he wants to be a part of. Hopefully his mother approves. Shia LaBeouf Poor Shia LaBeouf is arguably most famous nowadays for putting a bag on his head and proclaiming he was no longer famous. He started his career when he was a little kid, but LaBeouf's breakout role came with the Disney hit Even Stevens. On why he first got into show business, the former child star told Parade back in 2009 that his reasons were purely financial. I just knew that money was a solution to whatever the hell was going on in my household, he said. So I went after a job that I thought I could make the most money for a 10-year-old or an 11-year-old boy. These days, he's a lot more careful with his words, admitting to an Esquire interviewer that he'd practiced their chat with his therapist. In that career-spanning discussion, LaBeouf stated emphatically, I'm a buffoon. My public outbursts are failures. Dot dot dot. I need to take ownership of my s asterisk asterisk t and clean up my side of the street a bit before I can go out there and work again, so I'm trying to stay creative and learn from my mistakes. Since then, he wrote and starred in the movie Honey Boy, which was reportedly based on his life experiences. Cole Sprouse A whole generation is falling in love with Cole Sprouse's Jughead on Riverdale, but he'll always be Cody from Disney Channel's The Sweet Life, Ross's son Ben from Friends, or even Adam Sandler's adopted kid Julian from Big Daddy. I don't regret anything about my younger career, mainly because we were children and didn't have too much power, but also because it gave us the privilege to be where we are now, Sprouse told Hunger Magazine, as reported by Teen Vogue. Although he's now a bona fide sex symbol thanks to Riverdale, the former child star insists he went through an awkward stage in college, during which time he quit showbiz and majored in archaeology. I had long hair down to my nipples and a puby mustache and like all tweed so just not really a good look, he revealed to people. It was bad, it was bad. Don't look for photos. Joey King actress Joey King started her career with a commercial for Life Serial. And, as Backstage noted, she's certainly come a long way since, landing roles in Ramona and Beezus and Crazy, Stupid, Love Along the Way, but King doesn't take her stint as a child star for granted. Her best advice for youngsters getting in front of the camera for the first time is to, just have fun. The Emmy-nominated actress shared while on In the Envelope, the actor's podcast, even with a character that's so dark and deep, you think, fun. That's a weird word. But as an actor, truly, it is so fun to dive into roles that are that deep and require that much concentration. As King started navigating her late teens and twenties, the roles she's chosen have been varied. She's starred in the act, Netflix rom-coms The Kissing Booth 1 and 2, and horror movie Slender Man. When questioned by As If Magazine about her favorite genre to work in, King replied definitively, My heart lies with drama. I love all genres, like comedy, but my heart lies in drama and when working in drama I feel most productive. Kiernan Shipka Mad Men was a defining moment for television. Little Kiernan Shipka, a standout in the ensemble cast, took on the role of Sally Draper when she was seven years old, but the child star had actually been on the small screen for many years by then, having first appeared in her at five months old. When Mad Men rapped, Shipka found herself at a loss, as she admitted to glamour. I had been on the show for a longer period of my life than I hadn't, she explained. The young actor was never going to be a flash in the pan as so many have been before her, though. She told the New York Times that she loves acting, and it's her love for the craft that keeps her pursuing projects. But she doesn't define herself by her job. She ensured that her post-Mad Men years were filled with all manner of different experiences, as she explained to E! News. Another massive TV job. Fronting Netflix's Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, 
also assisted in her transition from child to adult performer, while interesting work in the likes of indie horror The Black Coat's Daughter earned her cred as a serious actor. Drake Bell Some people may remember Drake Bell not just from Drake and Josh, in which he starred alongside Josh Peck for four successful seasons on Nickelodeon, but as one of the child stars of The Amanda Show, which also featured Peck and was headed by Amanda Bynes. It was there that young viewers first got to know wannabe rock star Bell, as he shredded confidently on his guitar as Totally Kyle. But as the Iowa City Press Citizen noted, Bell was in front of the camera long before Nickelodeon came calling, and he's been playing guitar since the age of 12. That's actually where his heart truly lies, particularly as an adult. He's released four albums total to date and scored a hit with the Latin-inspired, Fuego Lento. Bell looks back on his Drake and Josh time fondly, acknowledging, the entire cast was incredible, the entire crew was great and we're all like a family. Bell, who lent his voice to Spider-Man for Ultimate Spider-Man, added, I'm still friends, with them, and I still see everybody from the show. As for what his Drake and Josh character would be up to these days, Bell reckons, as he told Forbes, Drake Parker would definitely still be living at home with his parents. Melissa Joan Hart Most child stars are lucky if they get one iconic character, Melissa Joan Hart got two. First, Clarissa explains it all helped us figure out our lives. Then, Sabrina, the teenage witch made us realize how much cooler our lives would be if we had magical powers. During an interview with CBS Local, the happily settled wife and mother admitted she loves hearing that fans grew up watching her. It's such a nice compliment to think you were in someone's living room and it's so personal. I get why people have that familiarity, she said. Hart has used Sabrina as a learning tool for her kids, reinforcing the show's still potent moral core. As for where the character would be now, Hart told Entertainment Weekly, I would assume, Sabrina and Harvey, would be married, have gotten in a few fights by now, had maybe two or three kids and would be dealing with all the usual. Not content with just Clarissa and Sabrina, Hart fronted another TV hit later on. As an adult, she starred opposite fellow teen star Joey Lawrence of Blossom fame in the sitcom Melissa and Joey, which ran for four seasons. Nicholas Holt There are few stars bigger than Hugh Grant to make your film debut opposite, but that's exactly what Nicholas Holt did in About a Boy, the Nick Hornby adaptation that launched his career. In Holt's late teens, he had another major breakout moment in the celebrated drama Skins as the Scheming Tony. But while the former child star was talent scouted at just three years old, Holt admitted in an interview with GQ that he could have ended up elsewhere. He recalled, My best friend and I used to DJ children's birthday parties when we were still in school, which was really fun. Holt is modest about his demonstrable acting talent, struggling to explain to the Irish Independent why his career is on a consistent upward swing. He certainly has no issue getting jobs, starring in Mad Max, Fury Road, portraying author J.R.R. Tolkien in the biopic Tolkien, and playing against type in True History of the Kelly Gang. The British powerhouse is realistic about the nature of his chosen career. However, telling Vogue, it wasn't easy to transition into working as an adult and being able to select the right roles to ensure I can continue doing what I love. Dakota Fanning Dakota Fanning has been a fixture of our screens for so long it's difficult to imagine a time when she wasn't acting. However, although Fanning has seemingly been performing forever in works like I Am Sam, Uptown Girls, and War of the Worlds, during a conversation with fellow former child star Freddie Highmore for Varieties, Actors on Actors, she admitted that, rather than securing her a place in Hollywood, being a child actor made her more susceptible to doubt. You're walking this line of defending yourself, but not too much, because I don't have anything to defend, she explained. As people noted, Fanning balanced making movies with attending a regular Los Angeles high school, where she was even a varsity cheerleader. This presumably helped keep her feet firmly on the ground even as massive roles in the likes of the Twilight franchise thrust her further into the spotlight. The actor has remained ambitious throughout her career, telling Marie Claire, I've never been the kind of person who has been like, I want to do this, this and this, and then I'll be happy. She's diversified her roles extensively since graduating to adult acting, appearing in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time. In Hollywood and in the dark TV show The Alienist, Angel of Darkness, among many others. Bailey Madison Even though her career still seems like it's just getting started, Bailey Madison has been around for a while, racking up quite a few roles since her debut in Todd Robinson's Lonely Hearts. 
There was a time when the bridge to Terabithia Child Star worried she wasn't doing enough, but, as Madison explained to Darling Magazine, it suits her better to keep her circle small. I expanded it once, it didn't work out, so I brought it back in. I think that was a part of growing and learning through the years, she explained, noting her mother and sister read scripts before she agrees to do them. Bailey Madison has had a stunning transformation, and, as Madison gushed to just Jared Jr., acting as a producer as well as a performer on A Cowgirl's Story marked an incredibly gratifying experience. Producing is a very selfless job. It's about taking care of everyone on set before you, and I think that's why I loved it so much, she acknowledged. Madison relished the challenge, just as she did when she decided to write a young adult novel. As the Good Witch star told Darling, it was about creating a space for herself where there wasn't one before. Abigail Breslin Although Abigail Breslin grew up on set, at home she was treated like any other kid. My family has been really important in keeping me normal. Growing up, when I rapped on set and would go home it was always a set-free zone. We couldn't talk about work, we just talked about real normal life things, she revealed to Entertainment Weekly. Breslin, whose early roles included Bo in Signs and that girl from Little Miss Sunshine, explained how she always enjoyed doing movies, but it wasn't until she was 12 years old and appeared in My Sister's Keeper that she understood it was acting she loved. Speaking to Refinery29, she shared, Every article since I was 12 has been, she's all grown up. Dot dot dot. That's what I'm gonna have on my tombstone. All grown up, like all the way. Breslin reckons people wish she could stay a little girl forever, but her roles in Ryan Murphy's riotous horror comedy Scream Queens and horror flicks Maggie and Final Girl have showcased how she's shed her geeky pre-teen skin. She's very aware of how public her mistakes are, too, admitting, if I do it, I'm another child star gone down the wrong path. Danica McKellar for a whole generation of little girls, Winnie Cooper from the Wonder Years was their idol. For a whole generation of little boys, she was their number one crush. Although actress Danica McKellar has worked hard over the years to distance herself from her breakout role, she realized as an adult that she and her famous character have more in common than not. As a mathematician and best-selling author of math textbooks, McKellar wants young women to understand that, you don't have to choose between being fabulous and fun and being smart, they go hand in hand, as she told CNBC. McKellar has also found a comfortable spot for herself at Hallmark, featuring in festive fare like Very, Very Valentine and Coming Home for Christmas. Looking back on the wonder years now, McKellar cannot overstate its importance. The former child star explained to Washington Latest, it's foundational, because I feel that everything has grown from that. Some people ask me if it bothers me when they bring up Winnie Cooper. No. Sabrina Carpenter The stunning Sabrina Carpenter enjoyed a star-making role as the sassy Maya in Girl Meets World. It was such a beautiful experience, I wouldn't have changed it, Carpenter told Marie Claire of her time on the show. The talented multi-hyphenate, who signed a record deal at 12, has been pursuing both music and acting ever since. Carpenter explained to Teen Vogue, I'm kind of always focused on both of them. They help each other out. Although the former child star is technically following in the footsteps of the likes of Selena Gomez, Carpenter is firmly focused on forging her own path. I can only look at it as a compliment when I'm compared to successful people, but it does sometimes feel like I'll be a Disney star until the day I die, she admitted to Vogue. Rather than feeling limited, however, Carpenter uses it as fuel on her journey, which is exclusively her own to navigate, as demonstrated by her choice of complicated roles. She portrayed a privileged teen dealing with her own prejudices in The Hate You Give and starred in the dance-focused Netflix movie Work It.